today we will talking about geodesics so what is geodesic so geodesic is a curve of extremum length extremum means either maximum or minimum okay so in other words geodesic is a shortest distance between two points shortest distance between two points so straight possible path in a curved surface is also called geodesic okay so here in here there are two surfaces so if path is curved it means here velocity is different at each point it means acceleration is not equal to zero but if this is a straight line it means velocity is constant and deceleration is zero okay in flat space this is a flat space so between a and b so this is a straight line it means geodesic is a shortest path in flat space a straight line is geodesic geodesic is a straight line but in curved space between a and b so this is a curve and this is a geodesic is a great circle okay here this is not a straight line but in flat space geodesic is a straight line now curvature of a curve so as we know what is curve so a curve is the locus of point whose position vector can be expressed as a function of single parameter okay so this is a curve means c is a curve such that x i this is a function of single parameter so if we take parameter s yes, so this is a curve okay what is curvature so the arc rate of rotation means this is a curve so if we draw tangent line each and every point okay this is tangent line this is this is tangent so the arc rate of rotation of unit tangent vector is called curvature vector means this is a tangent so this tangent arc rate of rotation if s yes, is arc length and dt by ds this is tangent component this is t ds okay means this is arc rate of rotation of unit tangent vector so this is called curvature vector okay this is called curvature vector and magnitude of curvature vector means t ds is equal to dt by ds this is called curvature this is called curvature and is denoted by a greek letter kappa okay so this is curvature of curve so the arc rate of rotation of unit tangent vector is called curvature vector and magnitude of curvature vector is called curvature in riemannian space vn in riemannian space vn let c be a given curve suppose this is a curve this is a c means c be given curve and x i be any point suppose this is a point p x i okay this is a p on this curve in vn then the unit tangent t unit tangent t this is unit tangent okay unit tangent t so the curve has contravariant components means ti is equal to dx i of 1 ds generalizing the concept of vector curvature of a curve is in in three dimensional space 
we call derived vector of t okay in general along the curve the first curvature vector of c relative to vn it is a vector whose contravariant component pi are defined by pi is equal to this is ti covariant differentiation means with respect to k dx k by ds okay the first curvature of the cup curve kappa is given by this curve for this curve first curvature this kappa is given by g i j p i p j okay so this is in square root so this is first curvature of a curve the direction of the first curvature vector p cap this is the direction means this is is called principal normal direction okay now from here the components pi of curvature vector may also be written as pi is equal to del ti upon del x k plus p t j t j Christopher symbols i j k into dx k y ds okay in other words this is equal to d2 x i upon ds2 plus i j k dx i upon ds into dx k upon ds okay because what is ti so from above ti is dx i upon ds so tj means dx j upon ds or dx k upon ds okay so here j is dummy okay so pi is equal to d2 x i upon ds2 plus i j k here uh, this is j dx j upon ds and dx k upon ds now the another definition of geodesic can also be explained in three dimensional euclidean space a geodesic is a curve of extremum length in other words geodesic is a path of shortest distance between two given points on the surface okay in other words in the form of this curvature a curve whose first curvature relative to the surface is zero okay means geodesic is a curve whose first curvature is zero this is called geodesic geometrical interpretation of geodesic okay so let c be a given curve this is curve c okay in n dimensional space vn and a and b are two fixed points on this curve c let x i of t be the coordinates of current point p on c okay let t1 this is t t0 and this is t1 so t0 and t1 be the values of parameter for the path a and b now the curve c changes infinitesimal to c dash means this changes to 
C dash provided endpoints A and B are same. Okay, means P tends to P dash whose coordinates changes X I such that for example here X dash I is equal to X I plus Z I okay where Z I is function of T Z I is also function of T which when is at A and B okay now the length Yes of the curve C from A to B, yes is equal to T0 to T1, Gij dxi by dt, dxjy dt square root dt. Okay, it means this can also be written as T0 to T1 Gij this is Xi dot Xi dot and this is Xj dot okay in the square root so this is the length also the length of curve C dash this C dash so the length of curve C dash is obtained on replacing by xi to xi plus zi. Okay, it means if we replace in place of xi to xi plus zi and x dot i is equal to x dot i plus z dot i. Okay. Thus, if arbitrary displacement, the length of the curve is unaltered, the curve is said to be geodesic in Vn, that is A to V, ds is stationary, okay? So, in geodesic case, this is geometrical interpretation of geodesic, okay? An important theorem on geodesic means prove that a necessary condition that i equal to t0 to t1 phi x comma x dot dt be an extremum. Extremum means maximum or minimum. As we have explained that minimum means straight line, maximum means great circle. In curved space, maximum means great circle. Okay, so B an extremum is that del phi upon del xi minus d by dt del phi upon del x dot i is equal to zero, where dot denote differentiation with respect to t. Okay, proof is let us consider a curve C such that xi is equal to xi of t where t is parameter and let integral i is equal to t0 to t1 phi of xi x dot i dt okay so as we have explained in the definition by changing the curve c means c change to c dash it means c dash such that x i is equal to x x dash i is equal to x i plus z i okay where z i we function of t also means z i of t 0 is equal to z i of t 1 is equal to 0 okay because as we know if 
this is a curve C and this is by changing it finite small change means this is a curve C and this is curve C dash so at initial and end points means A and B there are no any change okay so z i of t0 is equal to z i of t1 means this is at this is t0 and here t1 okay so z i of t0 and z i of t1 is equal to 0 okay now in this case this integral i this is suppose 1 i can be written i dash is equal to t0 to t1 phi x i plus z i and x dot i plus z dot i t t okay this is 2 now i dash minus i so i dash minus i is equal to integral t0 to t1 this is common so phi of x i plus z i x dot i plus z dot i minus phi x i x dot i dt okay now by Taylor's theorem by Taylor's theorem we have this is equal to integral t0 to t1 del phi upon del x i z i plus del phi upon del x dot i z dot i dt plus up to show one since we have Taylor's theorem f of x plus h minus f x is equal to del f upon del x So now i dash minus i is equal to delta i is equal to t0 to t1 del phi upon del x i z i plus del phi upon del x dot i z dot i dt okay this can be written as t0 to t1 del phi upon del x i z i dt plus this is by separating t0 to t1 del phi upon del x dot i z dot i dt okay so this is equal to t0 to t1 del phi upon del x i z i dt plus this is del phi upon integral by parts so this is first function so del phi upon del x dot i integral of z dot i is equal to z i okay minus dy by dt of differentiation of first del phi upon del x dot i again integral of second so z i and integral dt and here t0 to t1 okay as we know integral 
a formula of integral by parts so first function as it is integral of second minus sine of integral differential of first and integral of second so this is equal to t0 to t1 del phi upon del x i z i dt minus here t0 to t1 dy by dt del phi upon del x dot i dt is this thing okay since this should be zero because zi at t1 is equal to zr of t to t0 is equal to zero since zi t0 is equal to zi t1 is equal to zero okay it means delta i is equal to t0 to t1 del phi upon del x i minus dy by dt del phi upon del x dot i z i dt means this is common z i dt is common so we can write here this type okay the integral i is said to be stationary the integral i is said to be stationary is said to be stationary if delta i is equal to zero okay hence the necessary and sufficient condition that i may be stationary it means this is equal to zero okay del phi upon del x i minus dy by dt del phi upon del x dot i is equal to zero this equation is called euler or lagrange equation okay so this is important that this equation is called euler equation this is also called lagrange equation okay so this is very important equation known as euler equation